what is the correct path to be on the left hand path or the right hand path or does both lead you to the same destination yeah um good question although many roads may lead to the same destination is which one gets you there on time and um you know if you imagine you had to be somewhere at a particular time you could take various mode of transportation let me turn the music down right yeah you can take various modes of transportation right you could walk it you could crawl you could run you could take a motorbike you can take a bicycle you can take uh, a car and you could take a plane take a helicopter now the question is if you had to be there at a particular time depending on the mode of transportation you took like i said you could crawl but would that be the best mode of transportation because the terrain you'll be traveling in do you have to cross seas and would you be comfortable and how long would it take you to travel crawling as opposed to walking for example so that's a very interesting question and this is why in in most um, spiritual practices they will tell you that the straight and narrow path is the one to take because you know people will say that the fastest way is from one point to another it's a straight line so i'm saying that to say that some of the some of the methods you might use may never get you there on time so it's all about the timing and um so when you look at these different ways i i have explained that some of them are actually set to trick you to hinder you hinder your travel and so the correct path is the right one and you can travel quickly on your own but um when you travel with people you know it's more it's actually wiser so it may be a little bit slow but it's the best way um so yeah not all the same roads will get you there on time because the destination has to be like for example if you were going to catch a plane and the plane leaves at 10 o'clock you traveling in these different modes of transportation may mean that you arrive too late and miss the flight and miss the plane so it's about where you going and why rb london ldn during the 1000 years the 144000 will be getting groomed what will be happening on earth well it all depends there's a lot of chaos is getting ready to to happen now we you know there are many changes all the time you know there are elections going on right now there are rumors of wars wars are going on um, a lot of new things are coming into play so the planet um, will be in chaos at that time all right remember you can always call in live as well on the number um, plus four four if you're dialing from outside the uk seven five three double nine six three double eight two yeah so reminding you that although we answer questions here you can see it's live it's rapid you can ring right now so you know we don't fake the funk this is real but at the same time due to time constraints there's nothing like reading the scrolls the scrolls from the master teacher Panda Bab Yanun. and that question you've just asked um, is covered in this scroll called the bridge to salvation right because Wu Sabat is the bridge to salvation so when we're saying that what will be happening on the 
on the planet at the time, um, when these 144,000 are being groomed and taught, it all depends on the, um, the events that take place. And the people on the planet, they have a, a role to play. This is what we're doing here because the planet, is, if it's vibrating on the right frequency using a shuk or divine love, and we're uniting and we're eradicating all the things that are causing the problems, then, you know, we, we can change the outcome. Yeah, so a lot of times we feel like we're helpless, we're not. Especially if we are able to come together and work together and change things very quickly. And this is what Wustabat is doing, all right? Um, right, let's see. Uh, okay. We've got Ajayi. Much, we appreciate, love your donation. Um, how do you keep getting stronger if every time you die and don't make the grade, you forget? Is there clues that pull you to, to, to the truth? You keep getting stronger because the whole point is don't look at, people look at failure when they don't um, get a particular outcome as failure. There, there's no such thing, really. It's about learning and experience. So, when, when you come back, you utilize that experience and the learning that you've accumulated. And what happens is that you, when you come back, it's only because there was a specific area that you needed improvement on. So don't look at it like a failure. So um, it's all about learning from, from the experience. But what I was saying is that these classes are quick. Um, we don't have, I don't really have that much time to open up all the scrolls and read a lot and give you the information. So you still have to read the scrolls from Parna Babylon, Dr. Malachi Z. York. You have to study. And we've even made it easier by giving you a foundation course, which is an online course that explain, you know, a lot of the things that people keep asking us over and over again. And you get like the chance, you get the, the vibrations, the language, you get a lot of videos, quizzes, and you can, you know, really study at your own time, which gives you a great foundation and an orientation to Wu Sabat and then how to progress with your further learning. And remember, the, the Wu Sabat Telegram group is in the chat, and um, it's amazing because we get people asking us questions every day in real time, and they're getting their questions answered. So we have facilitated it, we have, we have um, provided a platform that facilitates you being able to ask us questions at any time. Of course, we're in different time zones, so we may be asleep when you ask a question. And when we wake up, one of the mods will look at it and will answer it. One of the student teachers, including myself, will answer your question. So if you don't get your question answered straight away, that's just due to the different time zones, and we are also very busy um, doing other things, but we always will address the questions. All right, so join the official Wu Sabat Telegram group. Um, Terry Jamal, I wanted to ask regarding the, the dimensions of existence. Could you give me an overview of what Wu Sabat teaches? Then the same vein, then the same vein are dimensions different from the densities of existence. Okay, um, so there are nine realms which could be also referred to as dimensions or even planes. The, the planes are um, subdivisions, right? The best example I can give you is like when you look at, let's say, colours. You may have nine colours, you know, like um, blue, green, red, yellow. And each one of those, although it may be like when you look at a rainbow, although it may be layered on top of each other, in actuality, each one has many, many subtleties or millions of colours that make up, say, a red, you know. So these um, words are, are interchangeable in the sense that you can say planes and you can say realms. And in 
in religion, for example, when we were being taken to the school of Islam, we were told of like, you know, the three main abodes for like, you would have humanity, which will be referred to as um, Nasut, and then you will have the one where in religion you refer to as the angels, or now we know as obviously higher beings on those planes, on those vibration, as um, that would be referred to as Malakut. And then the, the one above that, where we would say that the, um, the most high was in, would be saying Lahut, all right? So those would be like those three, but then you had various planes within that. So, you know, like the physical plane, the spiritual plane, um, or, the, or the plane of, um, um, what do we call it? The plane of force, yeah? You have the, the physical plane, the plane of force, the spiritual plane, the mental plane, and so on and so on. So when we say the nine, we're saying nine to the ninth power of nine. So it's not just like one layer on top of each other. There are many, many subtleties or different variations of those layers, all right? So um, a dimension is kind of like saying, um, you can have many things existing in one place, but on different density levels. So yes, so that's another word. So when we say density, the, that's the variation. So the harder, the more physical things are, um, the more dense they are and the higher the vibration. So the, the lower realms or planes vibrate slowly, but the higher ones vibrate fast. Again, this is all in our book and in the online course of the um, Fast Track Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey. It gives you all the realms and uh, the different... So another way of looking at it scientifically is like when you look at the periodic table, you have zero or then you go to the right, which is H1, H2, H3, etc. coming this way where you start with the hydrogen um, atom and then you, you know, you, that's one, and then you get two, and then three, and each one com is composed of the previous atoms in terms of the arrangement of the atoms. But when you go the other way, you get the E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, again, to nine levels, and um, that will be going into the etheric side of things. So everything has a, a kind of an equivalent counterpart on the different realms, all right? Okay, let's see what else we have here. You cannot negate reading the scrolls. I have to keep emphasizing that. Um, right. Okay, Kian, I think if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. What advice could you give to someone trying to connect with the guiding spirits, ancestors, and other key supreme beings? This is all expressed explained in the Pataruk, in our Pataruk, because you have to get to know yourself because you are your ancestors and your ancestors are you, right? You are the, you are the manifestation of your ancestors, both agreeable and disagreeable. All right, I'm going to stop to take a call and then we'll come back to your, your question. Greetings, could you ask your question, please? Rahul Bhatt. Rahul Bhatt. Um, I'm Keon McKay from uh, the United States in Alabama. Right back. Uh, my question to you is, well, I want to start off by saying I appreciate your videos. Uh, I'm 22 years old, so I'm coming into the culture of Usa Bat at a young time, and I think I'm very fortunate enough to come across the information. But my question is, can you go into a little more detail about the Seven Thunders? Okay. Tour. And yeah, it's amazing to see young people um, of your age uh, embracing Wusabat because you are the future and um, the more you learn and study and then you can teach as well. So yeah, I appreciate love you also embracing Wusabat. Yes. And let me go into the Seven Thunders. Um, the Seven Thunders can be found. I just so happen to actually have my, um, my holy tablets with me. Um, for those who don't know what we're talking about, in the Holy Tablets, 
um, at the back of the holy tablets, there are there is a page called the Seven Thunders, um, and I'm going to just read it, right? So it says, the Seven Thunders, also referred to as the Seven Plagues. It says, the Seven Thunders have been recorded by the ancient for thousands of years, by the Hopis, the Yamasi, and the Nuwapians, have logged these thunders as a sign of the coming of a new planet, Nibiru the coming in of a new era, the sign of the end of the present world, ruled by evil and the resurrection of the ancient mysteries of Egypt, Atlantis rising again in the heart of Georgia, in a place called Wahani. These signs are the signs of the times, recorded by the ancient Nateru of ancient Egypt and passed down through time. They are called the thunders or the plagues. The first thunder, much starvation, sickness, starving children, homelessness and diseases. This already passed and continues. The second thunder, the sky becomes sick with holes in it that look like sores. Lung disease spread, breathing problems occur, green mist coming from holes, polluting water, um, growing deformities, bacteria in the water, little devils, sea animals begin to die, fishes are trying to get out of the water, water becomes death to them, physical and spiritual illness, mutations in animals. The third thunder is many new species, notations, mutations in animals, crossbreeding in species, death of frogs, honeybees, turtles, deformed humans, multiply genetic splicing and cloning. The fourth thunder, sign of twins, Ya and Wei, one guards the South Pole and the other guards the North Pole. Havoc begins with these poles, that's referring to the North and, and the, um, the South Poles. Structures break down religion, moral and financial. The devil winds El Nino take over. The fifth thunder, which is um, four great people will perish. Floods, lightning, storms, tornadoes, landslides, hurricanes. Hell in the summer, forest fires, children killing children, children killing their parents, rampant insanity and murders, an upsurge in drug addiction and demonic revivals parading themselves as righteous. Oh Nina, little girl will come. The sixth thunder. Changes occur, the star people return. Signs in the skies, new planets, new galaxies, meteorite storms, Climatic alterations, global warming, spiritual revivals, presence of divine, disregard and respect for the present world government's leadership and politics. Then the final one, the seventh thunder, it says, the end of the world as you know it, which is the year 2030. All right. Now, each one of these thunders, once it starts, it continues. So it's not just like, it's just one and it's done and then it moves on to the next one. Each one continues. And so, yeah, so that's, that's the seven thunders. Um, and the master teacher has been telling us, and if you look at the information that is broken down and what's going on in the world right now, you can actually see these thunders or these seven thunders taking place. Um, so this is why it's so important that People that are awakening worldwide are actually embracing Wu Sabat because Wu Sabat is that new cycle referred to as the sun cycle, you know, that's coming in, that has come in since the year 2000. And this is partly the reason why the master teacher has been kidnapped and incarcerated because in order for the new cycle and the new way that is explained here coming in means the old ways have to perish or go. And so... This is, what, this is what we're in right now. I hope that answered that question. Um, yeah, um, I was just finishing off that question of what advice could you give to someone trying to connect with the guiding spirits? Um, Wu Sabat. Study Wu Sabat, study the power of Taruk, study all the scrolls, learn how to communicate with your ancestors. We have rituals, we have everything to guide you how to do this properly and then you know you would basically know because it, it will it works for you um 
Okay, so let's see. We've got a Swiss. Can you explain about the younger dryers, if it was a thing and how it came about? I've got another call. Say your name, where you're calling from, and please ask your question. So, Dre, London. Um, sorry, but it's two. So, the first okay. one, can you explain the purpose of the stone structure of Gobekli Tepe in Turkey? And secondly, can you um, explain why we've built or why uh, the stone structures was built um, in history, but we don't build any now, essentially? Um, I'm not entirely sure of the one in Turkey. Um, what, what did you say it was? Gobekli Tepe. Um, how would you spell that? Uh, give me a sec. Because I may know of it, but I just want to have a quick look. Um, in Turkey, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I know, whilst you're finding that, um, the stone structures were built for... Me have you found it? Yeah, G-O-B. G-O-B. Yeah, mm -hmm. E K L I. E K L I. Yeah, I and got it. T, yeah, T. -E. I found it. Yeah, e -E. I just want to see. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, I see it now. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe one of the moderators might be able to add to that. But I, what I do know, it, it relates to in South America when you look at, um, some of, what they were using some of these temples for um, was for sacrifices, like the, the Mayans. But I don't. It looks like that. I don't want to. I don't want to give you the wrong information. So let me come back to that one. Um, but in terms of the, the structures, they were built for specific purposes. To, as I said previously, to balance out the planet, or to be used for schools, or to be used for extraterrestrials and different. Um, um, ancestors that would visit the people that they related to so for example the the pyramids were built by you know our ancestors and the tharu but you have pyramids all across south america and different places and some of it was to to help balance out the planet um, it all depends on the structure and um, some of it was used to in terms of the energy grid to you know channel energy or do certain things so Depending on which particular structure, um, we'll have to look into more details. But this, um, this one here, I'm not too familiar with, so we'll have to come back to you on that, unless one of the moderators in the chat is able to elaborate. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, if I can't get you any information today, we we'll always have next week to to get more information because I like when I. I'm faced with a challenge that I don't know, which means that I have to go and do more research and study myself as well. All right. Yeah, when I appreciate love, Sultan uh, Al Hathis, for your, um, again, for your donation. <laughs> I am the Buddha of this time. Do you believe in me and spread my word among the, the nations or not? The thing, yeah, um, you know, when you look at Buddha, he's, he's also in, this, in the Holy Tablets. And... Um, what he taught was really about desire and how to desire is leads to sufferation and how you, one should be able to meditate and be able to tune into themselves and to realize that they are the you know the gods that you know others are telling you to to focus outwards to so in terms of B buddha's teachings or any of the teachers who were teaching Things that are aligned with all sabbat, you know, we don't have any we don't have any issues with that because, um, you know, desire is the ultimate road to sufferation. So it's about yeah. Here we go. I've just found um, on page two four six of the holy tablets. That's what the real Buddha looks like, and um, yeah, we we do we do explain and teach about you know Buddha's teachings, but. As we say, a lot of um, a lot of people who are trying to find their spirituality or the right thing to do, um, they will end up with like Buddhism or Hinduism until they realize that Africa was before both of those, and African spirituality actually predates both Hinduism and you know uh, Buddhism. But the lessons of you know, love thy neighbor, 
treat other people the way you would like to be treated, meditation, peace and connecting with yourself and being in control of your, your desires. That's something that, um, you know, is right, right and exact. All right. So, yeah, you, you, the, you're the Buddha in terms of you being able to control yourself. And in fact, you can say that for every one of those teachers, you can say you're the Christ, you can say you're the Buddha, you can say you're the, you know what I mean, the Muhammad, the Allah, the, the Yahweh, depending on, you know, your understanding of the term. And this is what we're teaching, that ultimately we are those deities that look just like us, walk the earth, talk, you know, the right information, but Wu Sabat takes it higher because the person that they all learn from, both in the different um, higher schools of mysteries, would be the being known as Tahuti, um, which is the incarnation today of Dr. Malachi Z. York. So what we're saying is that all those teachers were pointing you in the direction to go into the deeper mysteries, all right? Okay, let's carry on. Um, uh, kind of lost. Let me see where we are. Yeah, so um, let me go through the questions. Keep calling in, keep calling in. We have uh, Pumza Mall behind you. That behind you was sentenced to life for child molestation. You'll be sick, bro. See, this is what ignorance does, right? Th that is very... I should have not even really entertained you because it's clear that you don't have the actual facts. Research the case. And um, that was not what the charges was for because, like, we keep telling people, research the case and study and make sure you have the facts. And I'm not going to entertain that because... You have, you know, you know, we have the legal team, we have freedoctoryork.com, where if you really are interested in knowing the truth about the case, you would do your research. All right, let's go. Next My caller. Jamil, and I'm calling from Sweden. Rahubat. Greetings, go ahead. Yeah, uh, what I would like to know is, why did our ancestors uh, represent some of their gods with uh, animal figures? For example, Horus was a falcon-headed god. And there was a crocodile-headed god in Egypt and uh, things of that nature. What, what Were there some characteristics they were trying to highlight or why did they have such representations? And uh, furthermore, if uh, in Africa today, for example, in countries like Gambia, they have uh, sacred places where crocodiles, for example, are venerated. Yeah, that's, that's what I would like to know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's one of the things that is, um, again, misinterpreted when people see those ancestors with those, they're really masks. They were wearing masks and um, the mask, like you said, depicted their nature in terms of, you know, if, if somebody was, um, let's say, a very um, fiery nature, then they may, you know, have something that relates to that. So it was to, to do with their nature. Um, so for example, um, like you said, the falcon, um, which Horus wears, or like Osiris. These these are just like, um, like I said, just masks. And when they used to carry out certain rituals and certain ceremonies, they would adorn these masks. But obviously it was also a strategy because when people looked at them, they would say, oh, these are pagans because they, they worship animals and things like that. But in time when people were able to decipher when the master teacher started to teach and break down the, the real meaning behind them, you know, we got to know. So you're right, it was the characteristics of that individual and um, the animal that related to their nature was the one that they would use as a mask, all right? Rahubat, say your name and where you're calling from, please, and then ask your question. Rahubat, this is Dre from London again, just following up from the previous one. Yeah. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, what I'm trying to uh, understand is, so regardless of even if it's Gobekli Tepe or any stone structure, yeah, if it was built, well, they was built uh, uh, previously, why do we not build them anymore? So why, why? so for example, if we say, um, you were saying you was unsure of Gobekli Tepe, but 
there might be other sort of structures used for rituals, etc. Why we, is it we, we do build and we are building and, and we had that's why we built Tamaray Egypt of the West. Because the reason they're not um, building anymore because they've made it quite difficult for you to, especially in England, to own land, even though you can own land. And that's what happened on Tamaray. We were building all the different um, like um, structures so we can perform our rites and do certain things like the, the pyramid, the Mughraj pyramid, because we needed that to perform that journey inwards. We had the communication... Um, um, ceremony as well, where you could communicate with your ancestors. We had many structures that we were building, and even now we are we are building, and we are supposed to continue to build temples so that we can um, enact some of these rituals. So really, the reason we're not building is because we're not coming together and having you know the resources and everything to build. So we are supposed to still build, and we are still building but maybe not on the on a grand scale like it's noticeable at the moment. But that's what Tamaray of um, Egypt of the West was, and the master has taught that we are going to rebuild. We're going to rebuild it even bigger and more granular, and we're, we're building um, sanctuaries. The sanctuary of Yanun being built at the moment in Trinidad. It needs help, it needs support. This is why these structures are not being built, and we're supposed to build those sanctuaries worldwide and the temples worldwide so it's really down to us to 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 come together and build and have these these structures under the guidance of the one who knows okay i've got another question um, who are the higher beings who control some of the celestial bodies and how do they control them Right, so that's, um, there are many, many different types of beings. Um, the Natharu being the highest, and you have different beings from different places and different constellations. We mentioned um, the Pleiadians, we mentioned the Greys, we mentioned the Reptilians, the Draconians, the Ashtar Federation, um, and there are many, many hybrids as well. So they are also constantly expanding and they're from different different constellations like Draco or the Draconian are from Draco. That's where the word dragon comes from as well. So it depends on which species and which um, which beings you're talking about. And most of them that are on these higher vibrations or higher realms are far more intelligent. You have, you know, even we talk about the Anunnaki and we talk about, you know, the beings are able to shape shift like the reptilians and so forth. Some of them are here on the planet in human form, walking amongst us. So it all depends on um, when you say who are the beings who control. And it's just like here on the planet where you have, you know, certain countries have more power, more military might than others. So they will be able to, you know, subdue another nation quite easily. Um, it's the same way you have, like I said, the reptilians and the draconians that were subjugating the, the Pleiades, the Pleiadians, and they were like eating them as well, some of them, and they were like, please stop eating us, we will give you a different food source. So they then created the Adamites, and those Adamites were made really as hybrids for, for food. So yeah, it's, it's, it all depends on which beings you're talking about, but there is a hierarchy and the Natharu are the, the highest of them. Um, I feel I'm accent, but why do I only get snippets of old memories or things that I may? Yeah, this takes time in terms of you reawakening and reconnecting with, your, with yourself and your subconscious being because a lot of information is stored and um, you have to tap into it and reactivate your DNA and, um, and reactivate a lot of your memory and things like that so you can actually remember. It's a, this Wusabat is a remembering tool because it's already stored in you, in your DNA, and it's just about putting the right sequence. It's like a, program, a programming code where you have ACGT and you have to learn how to put the sequences together. And what Wusabat does is it helps you to do that by reactivating certain cells and 
you start to use more of your brain and, and, that, and then you're able to um, remember really who you are. And that's what it's about. Um, please, I wish you know what is the correlation and or the difference between the Moors and the black nobility. Got another caller. Rahul Bat, greetings. Please um, state your name, where you are. And... Go ahead. My name is my, my, my name is Victor Patrick Castro and I'm from Tanzania. Greetings. Yes, my question is uh, you said there are different drums. Who 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 hold them? Are they this experience or so they they are the one who who own this drum or they are the one who made this this drum? Because you say when you pass to the from 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 physical body, we are going to the spiritual body. So, uh, are the one who made the spirit, are the one who made soul, are the one who made this mental. And how 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 long did they, did they take to 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 make these things to make even the first the, the first human being in in in, in the world? Okay, I take? think I think I can make sense of your question. We're not, you're, you yourself are physical, you're connected to all of these, these realms at the same time. It's just that you have different parts to you. So what you're calling your mind deals with the mental because your mind is what you use to make decisions and that is connected to a reservoir called a mental reservoir. Your physical body, obviously you're familiar with the physical body because that's the one you spend the most attention on. And you know there are different parts of you because there's something keeping you alive right now. And at some point, when you stop breathing, your physical body is laid there and not moving. So there was something within you that's no longer there to stop you animating. When you say how far, you have to remember that the biblical accounts or the religious accounts, they tell you through the book that um, you follow that there was a character called, you know, God or whatever, that he just said, let there be light, let there be this, and he did all of this in six days. But that's not a reality because when you look at how long the planet has been here for and the many findings that they, they dig up and find and date go back millions of years. And, you know, the planet itself is very old and then you have to look at where does the planet come from? And then you go all the way to our solar system and then to our galaxy and then you start to look at the universe. So we're saying these, like, if we have to give you a date because your concept of time is based on the fictitious time that has been made, which is, it's, it's, it's like based on the motion of the planet going around the sun and how many days it takes to rotate in one rotation, like 365 days, which also fluctuates because of the leap years and things like that. But when you break the time barrier or come outside of the earth, you're no longer governed by the time of, you know, what you're calling the time belt of the earth. So you have to then go beyond that. And we, to give us a frame, we say 76 trillion years ago, we were in air pockets as Ethereans, as taught to us by the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, who himself happens to be a being that comes from beyond and outside of our galaxy. He comes from the 19th galaxy, in a, you know, which is known as Ilion, and from a planet within that galaxy called Risk. So he's able to tell us things, and he has been writing and publishing books about these things for many, many, many thousands of years. So if I may, maybe I could just read a little excerpt from this book called The Black Book. And it says in the introduction, before time as you know it was logged, beings existed in and out of this dimension. Worlds existed, planets inhabited by intelligent and not so intelligent beings who all lived in their own time zones based on their locations in this vast, boundless universes. Each place is in itself the place or origin of time, as in the word then, which becomes past and present simultaneously. These were agreeable and disagreeable beings. 
This was a system that was very similar to that presently on earth called the chain of existence that existed. Where as stars burn out, planets died and beings had to seek residence in other star systems. Oftentimes, we redeveloped new survival tactics, eating habits and even genetic alterations and manipulations to make it possible for us to exist in environments unsuited for our biological existence. We oftentimes had to alter environments, create climates and seasons. Oftentimes, the survival of one being meant the extinction of another. One of these such star system was Risk, a planet in the 19th galaxy, the eighth planet of a three sun system which was inhabited by the Riskians, also called the Natiru. The three suns of this planet Risk were known in time by different names, the most common being Atum, Atun and Amun, referred to as the Ray. Raye, rays. The Sumerians called them Utu, Afsu, and Shamash. When this planet Risk was visited by disagreeable beings from a dying star, they were welcomed into this great empire. Those that welcomed them were called the Natiru. The Sumerians called them the Anutu. The Council of Nine Inyads of the pre dynastic periods before man was called man, these deities met with open arms. They passed our decision onto the 24 elders of risk who passed it on to the 144 governors of the 18th and 19th galaxies, 72 governors of the disagreeable 18th galaxy, 18th galaxy and the 72 governors of the agreeable 19th galaxy, right? Thus it was agreed to share one of the three continents of the planet risk with these beings in distress. Risk's three continents are called Zarantu, Danuria and Kuzmosta. These disagreeable beings were only allowed to live on, on the continent called Danuria. In time, these disagreeable had decided that they wished to rule the whole planet and even the whole galaxy under one such being called Tarnush, who ruled a variety of star systems such as Draco, Aldebaran, Betelgeuse, Pleiades, Andromeda, and others. All of this side of the Milky Way. And then it goes on to explain, and this came out many, many years ago in the 90s. It says, recent discoveries have found a 19th galaxy through other star system where scientists and astronomers have discovered four new solar systems. One, formal Hort, where a star is covered by matter. Two, Beta Pictoris, which shows a star covered by dust and a blob below it covered by dust, and 3 HR 4796A, a cloud of dust surrounds which is an infant solar system, and 4 Vega, where you see a star and a concentrated spot, then layers of clouds. They have also discovered two suns and they will soon discover a third. You see, so he's going on, this was a long time ago when they hadn't discovered the tri-solar system. On October the 8th, 1997, and astronomers have discovered what they call the most powerful star as of yet and named it the Pistol Star because of its shape. The star was discovered using the Hubble telescope, which is powerful enough to see eruptions. The magnitude of the star is 9 million times brighter than the sun as the agreeable beings from the 19th galaxy get nearer to the disagreeable beings from the 18th galaxy. And that will go on and on. But um, and today they now have the James Webb Telescope, which is even more powerful than the, um, than the Hubble Telescope. And what we're saying is that you have the scientific community and people that are discovering because when they look back at, uh, uh, you know, a, a, um, a sun or a star, how it began, because this is how, you know, like galaxies and universes are formed. So that's how they study these things. So... To answer your question, everything coexists in different vibrations or different frequencies. This is why you can take um, water, which is liquid, and it can be ice or it can become steam, but they all still exist in different dimensions or different vibrations or different frequencies, you see. So the story of the planet, of the, you know, the, the universe goes back billions of billions of years. 
to trillions of years when you're talking about the original um, beginning. So this is why the information is put out by the master teacher. All right, I hope that helps. Um, let's go back and carry on with some more questions. How can someone get rid of laziness and what causes it? This is Joshua um, Jude Williams. Yeah, the thing about laziness, that's a really good question. Um, some things are genetic and so if something is genetic, sometimes it's very hard to overcome. However, you can, through practices, through the teachings of Wu Sabat, you can actually reprogram yourself. And so the best way to get rid of laziness is to have a plan and have things to do because you can, you can plan your day and have things to do with the time so that it's productive. Um, it's all about efficiency and productivity. So if you are lazy, it's easy to just procrastinate and leave things till later. But if you say, you know, have a timetable, have a schedule that you follow when you wake up and the more you do it, the more regular you do it consistently, then you're reprogramming yourself and it becomes normal. You see, so for example, if you get up and you're like, make sure that you know you, you you make up your bed or whatever and then you do some exercise then you're gonna you know say i'm gonna work for a few hours if you work for yourself or you're gonna go out to work and then when i come back i'm gonna do this you always have to have things to achieve and you tick them off so you're always looking at your you know your vision board in, and putting things together that's the way to overcome um, laziness just don't procrastinate get things done tick them off and then Look at the next thing you've got to do. D. Shelton, what is your knowing of Buddhism? I understand that Abrahamic religions are not for the melanated original people, but I would love to know what is the end game for us in regards to the afterlife. The afterlife, we, we, we call this the afterlife, but this is really you dying, and then the real life starts when you cross over, if you have um, prepared for it. But I'm going to pause and take this call and then come back. The calls get priority. Rahul Bhatt, greetings. What's your name? Uh, Where are you calling from? Uh, greetings. This is Adrian. I'm uh, calling from Philadelphia. Yeah, greetings. Uh, greetings. Um, I, I always, um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. I've uh, always been hearing um, this, this um, what would it say, question or... Um, they're saying like they look like us, but they're not us. Um, if that makes sense to you, like, um, is that dealing with um, people who I don't know on on under and and Lil's kids? If he had kids um, from his bloodline, and you know they're the one, you know, creating all the chaos on the planet right now, or you know, there's people I'm hearing, you know, that look like us, but they're running things behind the system like i mean like putting you know white people in the front as, as if they are the they're the ones causing all, all the problems but it's actually black people in the background you know you know yeah making all the decision and really you know creating the chaos on the planet if that makes sense sorry um what was the first i didn't hear the first part of your question clearly okay so i was saying that um one second let me try this mm -hmm. Uh, I did hear about the chaos on the planet, but I just wanted to catch that first part. First part. You can hear me again, right? I can hear you, yeah. Right. So, like, I'm hearing there's, you know, that saying that says um, they look like us, but, but they're not us. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. And with that saying, is that dealing with, you know, possible um, offsprings that was under in Lil's bloodline and causing all the chaos on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering if it's, I'm hearing that, you know, there, you know, it's actually black people in the background. I mean, put white people in the front as if they're the ones causing the problems. Um, but, you know, it's actually black people in the background, you know, 
Yeah, I, I, I get the question now. And the, the thing is, when, when we say I hear or I've heard this and that, it's good to know the source of where it's coming from because the, sometimes people will be saying things and it just spreads like, you know, hearsay and wildfire without any evidence. But the point you're making about the different seeds, there's agreeable and disagreeable seeds on the planet because even through the scriptures, it tells you that the devil has a seed and that there would be enmity between the devil's seed and the, um, the woman's seed. But in every, everyone has that disagreeable and agreeable within them because as humanoids, we evoluted by way of the waters and being partly reptilians. And that reptilian nature is in us as well as the other natures because you're a reptilian in terms of you're in water. In fact, as a tadpole, you're semen um, coming from the seas and there's different types of reptilians. And then we had the genetics of the Notaru. And like you said, when you're dealing with the Anunnaki story, you have the two sons, Enlil and Enki, and Enlil was the disagreeable one. And obviously Enki also mixed with taking wives from, from Africa, from the seed of the Nataru. So the day we're living in now, there are so many hybrids, so many ship, shapeshifters, and this is where the, the doctrine of Wu Sabat helps you to find out about yourself, first of all. You have to learn and know who and what you are, know what you've accepted, look at your actions, look at what you do before then looking at others. But you're right that the, the seed of Nana and Enlil, these are the ones that are causing the chaos on the planet. And why sometimes when black people um, teach that, you know, the white man's the devil and we talk about other races, um, the master teacher put out a recording many years ago saying that if you say you're black and you're first, where did the devil come from then? And so it's not about the races, this is why we say no one wins the race in racism. It's more about your real being, the inner you, and um, what your actions, like he says, if you, if you pro proclaim that you're a Sabian or a Nuwapian, let it be known by your actions. And the actions come by way of you learning the information, the doctrine, and then applying it. Because the only way you can tell who's who on the planet is based on their, their actions and what they actually do. And there are clear signs for the people that are causing chaos on the planet. Yeah, so I hope that answered that question. You've got donation and then I can report. Okay, I can see that D, D Shelton. We appreciate love your donation. Oh, what is your knowing of Buddhism? I think I covered that a bit before. Um, I read that Abrahamic religions are not for the original melanated people. Who is, your, who is our creator? What happens for us in the afterlife? All right, so again, um, we would you know, recommend you to get the scroll, the, the spiritual you after the physical you dies. As far as Buddhism is concerned, he was one of those beings that was enlightened and he was teaching. His main message was about desires being the cause of Sufferation and in Wusabat, we teach you to basically subdue your passions and learn to control your desires. And um, enlightenment, or we say, endarkenment, because that you know, darkness was before light, so it's about you learning about who you really are. And um, he, he, Buddha, was actually a melanated being anyway, even though a lot of people may not be familiar with that. Who is our creator? Your first creators are your parents, your mother and your father. That's an actual fact. Then, you know, there's a line that goes through their mothers and fathers all the way back to our original ancestors who were walking the planet first. Um, what happens after you pass on, I was explaining before we lost the cord, um, that People call this um, living, but really, when you're born, with every moment, with every day, you're getting older, you're aging, so you're actually dying, and you've come from life because the physical body is plagued by bacteria, 
and when you come out of it, you're no longer in the in the spiritual realm. You're not really suffering from the ailments that are you know that you suffer with your physical body. So when you when you're um, elevating um, to a higher conscious being, you don't really deal with your physical body. You deal with more your spiritual being. You deal with your etheric body and your mental being, all right? But again, join our Telegram groups because we can give you more information, give you references, post books and things like that where you can learn more information, all right? We've got another caller. Greetings, Rahubat, as we say. Say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question, please. My name's Sheldon from Dunstable. Um, I used to um, smoke a, I used to smoke weed, basically. Yeah. Um, it was to slow down my brain, really. Um, I get a lot of ideas. My brain kind of goes like 100 miles an hour a lot of the time. I can't even sleep a lot of the time. So um, I've stopped smoking. And uh, the ideas and the thoughts have kind of come back. So um, what's the best way to direct um, and narrow down the thoughts and the ideas to, to be more efficient, basically? Yeah. Um, the remember that what it is is that energy that's what it, it ultimately comes down to and it's about channeling that energy to use somewhere else so your mind is the most powerful part of you um and this is where the the practices of like meditation and focus and concentration comes in because your your mind can um receive messages or affirmation from anywhere in the universes and the boundless cosmos. So what you are able to do when you control your mind is that you then channel that energy to, to the thoughts that then bring about the manifestation of your thoughts. It's not um, an easy thing to do, um, but this is why everyone will tell you you know, you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. However, that thing, that thought that you're having has to align with, you know, not just yourself, but with positivity for the, you know, the, the people say the universe will give you what you want. That's if what your thought is, is going to bring about um, something for humanity, for example, or something for the white, for wider people. This is why most of the most righteous or most spiritual people that walked the earth, they were able to generate that energy that, and bring about positivity and positive change amongst lots of people and um, able to you know, do great things. So you have to think about controlling your mind. So learn how to meditate, learn how to channel that energy into something else. It's like... It's like sexual energy, for example. You have sexual energy, and if you don't control that energy, then what you end up doing as a male anyway is overexerting yourself and you're losing energy by way of your, your release. So when you don't do that, you can focus that energy and channel it to the mind, for example, to then think and, and focus and receive, you know, what people call inspiration, but really it's, it's about pulling that out formation or tapping into that mental reservoir to, to do great things and you manifest those things in the physical. Um, what do you do when the master teacher contacts you and need help? Again, that's a very broad. Um, JC Goodwin, um, if you have developed yourself and have that spiritual or connection with the master teacher, um, when he contacts you, he, he would tell you, I guess, what, what he needs you to do or, you know, guide you. Um, and it depends on what form of contact you're talking about when you say, what do you do when a master teacher contacts you? The master teacher contacts people in different ways, so you'll have to be a bit, um, a bit more clear. You know, some people are able to receive letters, some people get phone calls, some people can get emails, some people see him in their travels in terms of astral projection, some people, he contacts them in their dreams. Um, so yeah, you, you'll have to be, um, 
yeah, you'd have to tell me a little bit more about what type of contact you're, you're referring to. But yeah, he will, he, he will tell you, because you said, I need help. Um, I don't know what you need help from or for. So yeah, be a bit more specific. Um, how can we learn our language? Okay, excellent question again. We have the Nuapian, um, the United Sabians Worldwide website has a lot of resources in the culture section of the website where you can learn the language. We have telegram groups that teach the language. Join our telegram group. Also, the online course has a section there where you learn the language. So there are many ways you can get the scrolls, the books um, that teach the language. We've got... Um, you know, many different schools that teach the language. And the best way to learn the language is to use it, to speak it. So you hear when people call it saying Rahubat, but, you know, we're just saying greetings, but we don't get into a dialogue or a conversation. But you can learn the language by simply applying it, using the words you know, and having somebody you can call and conversate with, um, try and replace any English word you know with, you know, the, the language, the words from the language, and um, just use it, just use it. How do we know this is actually a simulation? Um, when you say, how do we know this is a simulation? Um, I, I mean, it depends on, on what you're referring to. It's, it comes down to you because the only thing you know that is real is, you know, like if you pinch yourself, if you talk to someone and, um, you know, there, there are things you can confirm for yourself. Other than that, you don't know anyone or anything else. The only person that can really tell you is the person that creates life, which is normally the woman, all right? Because they actually feel it and grow the, the being in their, in their womb. All right, let's take another call. Greetings, Rahul Bhatt. Please say where you are and um, your name and then ask a question. Yes, what's up, what's up, Bhatt? Um, my name's Stephen, I'm from London. And I've got two questions. Go ahead. Um, basically, it's on magic mushrooms. And I was wondering, does what a back teach on the magic mushroom being a rite of passage in the growth of the human being? And yeah. the other question was also, um, with using the tones and vibrations that you talk of, mm -hmm. can you hit those places that you hit when you do psychedelics and stuff of that nature? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't promote or recommend um, magic mushrooms, weed or psychedelics of any sort because... That's a, a synthetic way of trying to do something you can actually do naturally. I know some people want a quick fix and want to do things straight away, but it's actually better to do things organically and learn how to do it without the aid of, you know, these mushrooms and things like that. So it's all about opening your, 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 your chakras or your glands. I remember somebody made a comment in one of the videos when I said that, your glands are um, part of these vortexes or energy centers. And what, they, what they, they said, oh, that's not true. But what, why I maybe needed to clarify a little bit more is that each of the glands is superimposed with that energy center. So, um, so you know, like your, your, when you look at them, they're called like your thyroid gland, your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, your you know, the solar plexus, but each one of those has an energy center that is superimposed on it. So um, what I'm saying is you have to learn how to open yourself up by vibrating these energy centers. And the one that most people um, find difficult to open is the pineal gland, because that's the one that opens you up to this, to receive out uh, information from the other realms. And what, what weed and mushrooms and psychedelics do, they stimulate that section of your, of your brain um, in the you know, cerebellum, in the hippocampus region, because that's the area that deals with hallucination. And it, 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 you know, it kind of 
gives you that connection, but it's temporary because once you come off or come down from that high, you know, and the more you stimulate it artificially, it gets, um, it gets weaker. So it's like an analogy would be like, if you can use natural remedy instead of Viagra, then it will be better. If you kept relying or using the Viagra, eventually you can actually damage that organ and you won't be able to sustain it long term. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, make sure that you can do, you can do these things naturally through natural nature. We've got another call. Yes, greetings, Rahul Bat. Where are you calling from? Thank you. Greetings, Ken. How are you? I'm good. Do my best. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the. I've lost you for a moment. Are you still there? I think. Are, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, your line is. Yeah, we've lost you. Oh, I'm here. Okay, I'm you're here. back. Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. So, um, again, so Ken, my question is um, I've been having a lot of dreams lately. I just want you to share some insight, but I've been having a lot of dreams lately. Mm -hmm. And it's like I know that I'm in the dream, and before what's bad is about to happen, I, I tell myself to wake up. Mm. And it's like I really feel myself like my heart's beating like and they're always bad dreams again i don't know what to think about this okay the thing with dreams is that there are different types of dreams um you know they're, they're like dreams where you have to purge um i mentioned about you know you're always constantly storing and recording information in 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 the conscious world that is in your subconscious. And there are different types of dreams, like there are dreams that are just messages for you. Um, some are visions. Some are you just, like I said, trying to eradicate junk information that you've stored. Um, it could be related to situations that you're going through in terms of things you may be stressing about. Um, it could be, um, you know, there's so many reasons as to the dreams and um, your dreams are really for you and sometimes it may take a while for you to figure out what the dream is about. There are different types of dreams like if you've ever watched a movie Inception you can have dreams within dreams within dreams. Some dreams are you traveling and visiting other realms and um, you know having to maybe do something in those realms and then when you come back um, you're trying to piece, it, piece the puzzle together, so to speak. So what we would rec recommend is keep a notepad by your side when you wake up, when you dream, try to document as much of your dreams as possible so that over time you can go back and somehow you'll be able to piece the puzzle together. But it'll be, you know, it won't be right for someone to try and interpret your dreams for you. Um, so, yeah, d do that. And um, it, like I said, it could be, it could be a lot of things. You've got to learn about like um, taking control of the mind. Do you take caffeine? Do you take stimulants? There are many things that can cause you to, you know, dream and have all types of experiences. So, yeah, we'd have to be a bit more specific about a particular dream and what's happening. I've got another call coming in. Um, Rahul Bhatt, greetings. Can you say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question? Uh, yes. Hi, Raul Bat. How are you doing? Raul Bat, uh, doing yes. my best. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yes, so my name is Kaiser Charles. I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York, where I grew up. Cool. Uh, I've, always, yes, I've always liked um, watching Awesome Vision. I'm a real big fan, of it, and I love uh, reading Malachi York's books. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I'm, you know, interested in really like that information a lot um i have questions all my life growing up mm -hmm. especially um you know f from living life and i wondered about this multiverse our whole existence lots of things that i never had understanding like overstanding of why 
you know, a lot the way the world is being how it is. And I always felt different, you know, like always wanted, interested in loving, learning and things like that. So, um, yeah, there's a couple of things this, I could go on. Like, there's a lot of things I never uh, overstood until I started reading the books, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, I believe in good vibes. Our, our vibe attracts our tribe. And I want to know, like, um, you know, it, it, this was it's even more than it's going to take a... I could go on and on. It'll be a lot of conversations, bro. Yeah. But uh, basically, I'll try to go and say about that uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, um, um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can uh, tell me something that I could know. That All right. I might not we, have we are, an answer to about we, life. We appreciate, love your interaction, your question. You're aware there is a... Um, there's a community in Brooklyn, right? Bushwick Avenue. Do you go to the store and the community? Because there are many books there and um, you, you should really try to gather with other, other like-minded people. Um, one of the things, I wanted to wait till we had more people on. And um, if anyone has any experiences by reading the books and how Pana Babianun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, has touched them, if you could put that in, your, in the comment section... Because he wants to hear and know how people are reacting and receiving the information. And remember that some of the questions we ask are what will prompt him and let him know how we're developing mentally. And, um, you know, if you ask a question that we are unable to answer, you know, and it's one that he recognizes as well, okay, they need me to expound on that, he will be able to do that. So, um, yeah, put put some comments in the comment section uh, in the chat, and just say you know what you've experienced, or if you have any any questions or anything that how he's touching your life. That will be that will be appreciated. Um, Jabbar Amin, what is the name of the creator of the heaven, star, sun, and earth in your teaching? This is it. We we teach about our ancestors and. That concept of, uh, of one creator, that is the creator of the heaven stars, um, that's a religious mindset. Our ancestors, who are actually elemental beings, they are the ones that are responsible for creating, you know, what people are calling stars and heavens and uh, the sun. When you say sun, there are millions and billions of suns. Um, the, what we're calling the sun is just the one, the nearest one, you know, in our solar system. So this whole thing about creation goes back, yeah, so to answer the question directly, that would be our ancestors. Um, I want to thank you, D. Shelton, again for your um, your donation. Um, is witchcraft, candle, magic really a bad thing? Disagreeable. The thing about this whole thing about magic, it's about your intentions and what you're doing. And um, because people will call it magic, but a lot of the times it's really you, as we were saying before, focusing and manifesting things by way of your, your mental and tapping into, you know, beings that are on the other realms that can help you. And some people use these thoughts, this energy for disagreeable or to hurt or do things like you sacrificing animals and blood and taking people. Like if, you're, if your intentions are negative and um, disagreeable, then it will be a disagreeable outcome. But if you're using what you're considering magic, we have a part I don't call white magic, black magic, because it deals with what people are calling magic is really science. It's knowing how, it's like alchemy basically, it's knowing how to transform energy, base metals, and bring about outcomes, bending time. There are many things you can do with your mind. And this is where magicians, what people call magicians, the word ma- magic comes from magi, but it's really dealing with sorcery or illusionist, people who know how to in a way, bend reality, you know, make you see what you think you're seeing, but you're not really seeing it because it's an illusion. Yeah, so um, it's all to do with 
your intentions, your, your action and your focus and you can use disagreeable entities to do disagreeable things. But um, you can use agreeable entities to do agreeable things. People say good and bad, but as we know, good and bad is very subjective, right? So, um, yeah, again, the whole witch thing ties into, because the witch comes from Wicca, which is really the religion that Celtics were using where this witchcraft thing comes from, where, you know, they're talking about casting spells and um, because it, it goes back to practices that they were doing in the, in the, in the you know, Wicca religion, which is where all the, um, you know, we even started to talk about Halloween and Hallow Eve. And, and you know, this is where the, 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 the um, celebration of what they call Sam Hain, which became Uncle Sam you know, Narin Samun in, um, in Arabic. So this is all dealing with, you know, those types of practices that they were doing in, in the Wicca religion. And, um, and the, the, the person they consider the devil that is celebrated in what they call Halloween, which we've just gone through with, you know, if you look at what, what you do in Halloween, it's about ghouls and looking, um, scaring people and, They've, they've introduced this sweets into it, which is damaging to children's teeth anyway. So I'm just saying that you have to look at the origins of what they're calling magic or witchcraft. Um, yeah, so I hope that's answered that question. I love Vivian Jeffrey. Wu Sabat is our future. Absolutely. The earlier we release the master teacher, the better it is for us. Absolutely, 100%. We've got another caller, Rahubat. Say your name and where you're calling from and then ask your question, please. Yeah, and, and Tony from London. Greetings. How you doing, brother? But um, I would like to know the science of sex. Sex seems to have a lot of um, authority and power in our existence. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people that make money through sex or... Basically, my question is, what is the power of sex? Great. Yeah, sex is a very, very powerful force and um, it can be misused or used correctly. As you said, there is a science of sex and there is an art of sex. And the, the whole point of sex really is about procreation. So when you start to look at the science of it, um, the master teacher, Pandabab Yanun, has put out many scrolls. One of them is the, um, the sacred, let me see if I can find it. Um, it's called, here we go, the Lotus of Life, which is called um, the Lotus of Life on the Sacred Feminine, the Gospel of Yanun. This is a must-have for anyone who wants to learn and know more about the subject of sex. He has also put out... Um, Another scroll, which if I have it on me, um, I'll show you before I elaborate a bit further. And that's this one here. It's called um, Sex, Minds and Slaves. Because when you start to look at sex, as much as it's a taboo subject for some people, this is how we all came about to be here. Um, it, it even, I mean, it depends... The sexual act of two people um, with intercourse is obviously one way, but you can also, obviously, even with IVF and so forth, you still have to ejaculate to get the sperm to then be used to, um, to, to do the IVF. But yes, when you look at sex, the, the letters in the letter, um, in the spelling S-E-X, the I, I mean, the E can be interchangeable with the I, which gives you the six, which is six, 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 dealing with the six ether. But sex uh, has been made to be something that people just do for the sake of it or very frivolously. And as a nation, by just, just being irresponsible and reckless, you end up having lots of children. And these children, this is what I said about, it was really about procreation and you're bringing these entities from those realms that we're talking about because the, the being that comes out is actually gotta be a being that is 
either having a soul or a soulless and it can be just a spirit and it can be disagreeable spirits that you're bringing into the world so there is you know it's a very serious thing like who you meet when you meet them how you meet them what's your state of mind what's your physical state what do you have any diseases um, are you healthy are you unhealthy are you compatible um, this is why when you read our scroll especially the one i mentioned before which is the um the gospel of yanun it explains obviously when you you're an adult and you didn't know or have this information you're you can't go backwards because you're here you've you know you've already done what you've done you've got children so it's about the the future generation so how they're groomed like for example we don't condone boyfriends and girlfriends because that's how you're taking on energies from many many ancestors that you know you're going to bring into this world and this is why sometimes the beings that come through are very disagreeable and they do wicked and evil things and they the the serpent seed or the disagreeable entities that come through um that that person if they're not vibrating on the right frequency there's so much we can say and go on about the whole sex subject this is why we say join our classes because on on the saturdays we have um the ability to give you more time and read and take our time and again this um what i do here i go through and answer the questions questions quite quickly but you do have to study and take time to read the scrolls for yourself we already got another caller so again i have to cut that short rahul bat as we say greetings could you say your name where you're calling from and then ask your question please greetings my name is femi and i'm calling from um toronto canada hi femi uh, Hi, um, I watch you with my sister a lot, and she kind of like had a question, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like related to what you were talking about before with dreams. Okay. She's a dreamer. She dreams a lot, but like within her dreams, like she tends to like hear voices mm -hmm. that she doesn't see like the faces of people talking to her in her dreams. Yeah. I I, I try to like get her to go to start like meditating, right. but um, after a while, like out of fear, she said like when she meditates, like she sees stuff, mm -hmm. and so out of fear, she stopped meditating. So she wanted me to like help ask like if there's any comments you have about like dreams and also my own personal question mm -hmm. uh, just because like we're abroad right now i'm just wondering like if there are like any small rituals we can perform like in order to connect more with our ancestors thank you very much you're welcome uh, and this is why we keep saying please join the telegram group because we we post a lot of material um you know the chants the tones the uh, the things that you can do that can help change your your mind and your environment your mentality and your you know so remember that the master teacher because he's a 720 degree being he's very familiar with these beings on these different realms and he knows what um, repels them for lack of a better word word so by you learning the language, practicing the doctrine of Wusabat, studying the actual facts, the Patarut, the master secrets, applying it in your life, you change your energy and you change your vibration, which will repel these beings that, you know, they draw towards the negativity, they draw towards people that are negative and angry and miserable. And so it's about changing your vibration and vibrating on such a high frequency that they can't touch you. In terms of the dreams, like we keep saying, um, document your dreams. And we're supposed to learn how to, most people don't remember their dreams when they wake up. But you're supposed to, it's supposed to be natural for you to be able to, when you go to sleep, to be able to travel to different dimensions, um, have, you know, experiences. It's just like here, you have to know which people are um, good for you, bad for you, wrong vibrations, wrong energy. You want to stay away from that person. You need to, you know, work with that person. It's the same on these other realms. So you're supposed to be able to leave your body at will, travel and get messages and communicate with your ancestors and come back. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not strong enough, you can get, um, for, the, for lack of a better word, sent in the wrong direction or misguided even in those realms or even end up, you know, doing things that you, you, it's going to affect you. So the practices on calling on other people's 
rituals or chants or doing things that resonate with them and not you, it's not really good. So this is why learning and studying Wu Sabat will help you tremendously. Um, sorry, I've got another, gonna, okay, yeah, um, Darren. Yeah, Darren Warwick, again, we appreciate love. Every little helps, everything you guys do. We do this, you know, voluntarily, you know, we want to share. And again, let me just stop and touch on every single person that's activated um, is able to utilize their power. This is what we're saying. Once you start to learn about you and your powers and we have other higher senses, telepathy, intuition, psychometry, clairvoyance. These are things we had naturally that have been maimed. So you're able to learn how to get back these powers, but you have to eradicate the bad habits, the bad foods, the, you know, we were saying about the smoking, the alcohol, the, you know, I mean, obviously it's not going to be overnight. You have to discipline yourself. And if you want the best outcome for yourself, then you have to sacrifice and eradicate these things that are not good for you. You have to start learning how to meditate, drinking water, exercising, because all of these things help. So D Darren, thank you for your, your donation. Is it possible to trace our lineage back to the stars? Is African ancestry a good tool to use for a starting point? Um, unfortunately, we always keep bringing it back to, when you say African spirituality, that's what Wusaba is. And depending on which African you're talking about, because not some of our ancestors have also been um, compromised be, because some of the ways and practices that they have now adopt, uh, adopted are not good for uh, some of them are you know doing blood sacrifices and killing animals and you know spraying blood or asking for money or taking a piece of hair from someone there are all of these things that so it's very it's very important that you recognize that Wu Sabat is the answer. And some people have to learn the hard way if they don't accept it or don't take it on board, that's fine. Eventually you will learn and, um, you know, but I'm saying, yes, you can trace your lineage. All our lineage goes back to, we are the original people on the planet. So everyone comes from our DNA anyway. So you're already, um, you're already tied in. Your lineage is good, but the thing is, what method are you going to use to trace it? Because these sites that try to give you, you know, information about ancestry and so on, some of them are frauds and they don't um, give you the, the full information. I've known people to test them out just to see if it works by taking DNA or a hair from an animal and sending it and it comes back telling them they're, you know, they're from this tribe and that tribe. So that goes to prove that um, they're not all accurate. Is it possible? Yeah, you can trace your lineage back to the stars. We are from the stars. That's where we originally come from. Um, Wu Sabat is the tool for you to use as a starting point. All right. I've got another call. Rahul Bat, greetings. Um, could you say your name? Greetings. Please? Greetings. Thanks so much for ha keeping up. Uh Having my call. My name is Nura, and I'm calling from the United States in Tennessee. Rahul Bat, I like the vibration. You sound very positive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love. I absolutely love listening to you and the student and the other student teachers. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. It's all by way of the master teacher, Panda Babianun. Without him, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So all. You know, praise is I love to it. Him. Yeah. Go I ahead. I love it. My question is about happiness and joy. Because mm -hmm. I'm a lot of times I'm always asked, so how do you keep how do you keep yourself happy? Yeah. And I always have to kind of think and pause. And I always go back to my mother. So I wanted to ask, is happiness and joy given to us naturally while we're in our mom's wombs? And can we naturally keep it? Or can we lose it and get it back? Yes. Depending on our plans. Absolutely. Your mother is your first god and nurturer and the thing is, it depends on her as well, what she knew and what her mother gave her. But you're right, this is, this is why when you come out, you're still connected to that, to that world, to your mother, etherically, and to your etheric parents. 
and it's about the vibration and even before you come out as we explained you have three months prior to the nine months where things are happening in the unseen world or in the spiritual world where you're being prepared and this is why it's so important that the mother that is carrying the child she's in a state where her her mind state is relaxed you know she's not stressed she's not being put through any trauma and because all of that energy will affect the fetus and so it's good to be you know in that in that happy state all the time during that time you're carrying the the child and then the music everything the child is actually picking up and learning through tones and vibration and so it's very important to for the woman and the, the mother to be in a in a happy state and the males you should obviously you know how we do sometimes um we stress the woman out and um you know you're really supposed to be facilitating that environment and then uh, we we're talking about the science of sex earlier on as well so that things are done in the nicest and natural way in the healthiest way and that uh, when the child comes out again you protect it from the noises in the environment the harmful tones and vibrations in terms of the music and the food you eat etc etc but yes you can lose it because then when you come out you get influenced by you know in fact if your mother doesn't know what she's doing she may not breastfeed you to give you those natural um, antibodies and all the nutrients and everything that you need from you from the mother um, some people have issues you know with their nipples and, and and so on so they're not able to breastfeed but when you start giving it cows giving it giving the child cow's milk which is not really the best for it or other synthetic milk that already starts to have an effect and so when the child comes out, it's all about that nurturing and um, wusabat. Wusabat is the way. Um, it tells you exactly what to do and how to do it. And that's where, when you, when you come out, you get influenced by negativity and you go to school and they start teaching you a complete different way, the nurseries and the tones and vibration, then you may lose yourself. And children are still connected spiritually to the age of seven. And this is why in, in psychology, they'll tell you, give me, give me a child till it's seven and I'll give you the man. You know, some famous psychologist and, um, you know, people that teach tell you that. Excuse me. That's because they know that after seven, they start to lose that connection unless the, the parents are aware of how to groom and bring that child up into the world properly. But yes, you can regain it by like a lot of people get into bad habits they start following the bad company they do you know stuff like not good for them eat bad foods smoking drinking going to parties till all hours of the night and putting themselves in situations that are not good and then somehow something within them your inner being starts to tell you you know when you're doing something that you're not supposed to do that's not conducive or good for you so then you have to now relearn this is what Wustabat is there to do where you can start relearning and trying to fix yourself. And you can do it, you know, with just consistency. You know, don't give up. You're gonna fall like a baby. When a baby falls, it doesn't stay on the floor. It gets up and keeps walking. So every time you fall, you have to be consistent and get up. Every time you, you say, I'm gonna stop smoking, and then you fight and you battle with it. And then eventually, if you really, really would like to do it, call on your ancestors and um, as I said you have to deal with the traumas and the things that are stored in your subconscious right so you can regain it to answer the question what's the point of believing in a higher power to be to begin with um, this is from doing we, this we don't we don't actually um, advocate or promote believing we know that it works because it's like saying, why do you push yourself to do better anyway? So um, it, it, it's not a belief thing. It's, it's based on just like if you want to improve in anything, you have to work at it and you have to know that you have beings that are higher in terms of intel intelligence. So it's connecting with that source um, and to improve. 
Um, I'm trying to go through. All right, what's the what's the correlation and or the difference between the Moors and the Black nobility? Again, when please when you ask question, um, if it's, if there is anything that it's a reference, a book or a source, it'd be good to know. Um, the Moors, there are different types of Moors, right? You had Moors that um, sold out in terms of, you know, there are different types of Moors, the Morenos, and you had the original Moors or the real Moors, just like the house and the uh, field slaves, right? Um, it, it's like the, the whole thing about the Moors is that they were supposedly free men because they were no longer slaves and there were treaties that were drawn to say that they were Moors. But the thing is that if you watch the movie, um, I think it's 12 Years a Slave or something like that, a free Moor was still able to be taken as a slave because he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we were, we taught, the master teacher taught us about the Moors when we were going through that school of the United, um, the United Nation of Moors, and he he taught us about the whole Moor, Moorish thing. But the thing is that we've come out of that now, and we're really Africans, as in the original beings. And so all those schools have to come over to Rusabat if they want to learn who they really are, because a lot of that stuff doesn't even really work because you know, um, very few people are successful with, with, with explaining or trying to prove that they're free because um, the system we live in now, they don't really, they don't really care. They, they will do what they need to do. But we are already a sovereign nation by way of uh, us being here first. And we can prove that by having our own language, our own culture, our own everything that proves that we're indigenous on the planet, wherever you go, as African or the original Africans. Um, right, what else we got? Um, uh, okay, someone's answering somebody else's question. Yeah, this this thing about the the, the Jesus. Um, again, there are different Jesuses in the Bible. One is the Antichrist, and people think that they call in on Jesus. And when I said Antichrist, I'm talking, anti means to go against, to go against the, the teachings of the person that people call Christ or Yahshua. And so there's a lot of confusion and it's really, um, you know, giving energies to this being called Nana, right? Who um, obviously is related to Enlil. And then you have our Christ or Karast, who is Amun. In ancient, well, in ancient Egypt, um, Tut Ankh Amun, right? This is where they get all that story from. Can you explain who Konsu is and um, what he represents? Yeah, those questions are very broad, but Konsu is one of the, the um, Konsu is the person that they talk about when they talk about the Holy Spirit in religion, in Christianity. Together with um, Konum, they, these are the deities that in ancient Egypt performed the rituals of the um, creation of humans. Yeah, um, but that that country is representing the the Holy Spirit. This is where the dove in Christianity comes from because it's actually referring to Konsu, right? And um, it's representative of that being born again of that the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Ghost. And um, you tap him back into the real you, the real, you know, spiritual you, and then starting to um, walk that, that life or live that life of being, you know, someone that's anointed and is a Christ figure or living according to the laws of Wusabat. Yeah, I'm going through some of these quite quickly now because there are lots of questions Wait, 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 what? This is Amara. The Adamites were created as an alternative food source to the Draconian. Absolutely. 
Yeah, they're, they're hybrids. This is why they're always trying to figure out where they come from, trying to find... And when we say the Adamites, we're talking about a, spe a specific species which in the Bible becomes Adam, Rod, um, Roddy Red, because they were made in the image and likeness of the Pleiadians. And this is why they were referred to like that, yeah. So Amara, if that's a shocking revelation for you, it's the truth. Um, and there's a, um, let me see if I have it. There is, this book here is absolutely amazing. Um, actual fact number 108 is called The Proof by Way of Parnabab Yanun. It gives a lot of proof about the findings and everything that we talk about. We have so many scrolls because there's so much information you have to digest and absorb in a short period of time. Um, so yes, that's true. The Adamites were created 6,000 years ago or 4004 um, BCE before the Christian era. And um, when you add the 2000 AD, it gives you 6,000 years. That's where Adam was created. And that's referring to these Adamites. And uh, let me just read something quickly from um, the 33 commandments of the Sabians. The very first um, page, not the first page, but the introduction, it explained in relation to Parnabab Yanun. He says, I as a deity in the flesh incarnate from time to time as the reformer for the renew of our story every 24,000 years. I come from a planet Marzak, Risk, in Ma'alan, Iliun, you Munwapu of the Musbatu are or ought to thank the Parmuntharu for their protections and for their Partaruk, B Partarak, sent as a guidance how to, on how to live. I tell you this out of Ashuk, divine love, of beloved jewels of my eyes. You now have the Sawab, the truth, and it will free your mind, your body, and soul if you accept it. Love each other. Each one teach one. Pa Muntar, the warner. Live for, of, and by each other. Truth is truth. But this is the main part I want to read to you where it says, on the Adamites, right, going back to Amara's um, question, Amara, on the Adamites, I Pa Munbab Yanun, do not want you to think that the use of Adamite means all and every so called white person. It does not mean that. There were there was many Murapu Europeans on planet Earth long before the making, grafting, breeding of the hybrid seed of Mo Adamu, Adamites. The first man, Adam, was born six month Tammuz, sixth day of that month, the year 3761 BC, six thousand years back from two thousand AD. No one wins the race. In racism yeah so that's relating to the to those Adamites there's more to learn and read uh, right let's see what I'm gonna scroll through because there's so many um, okay I've done the Konsu one when practicing meditation I am able to see other beings are we protected when using our third eye when we are meditating right this is what we're saying that there are different beings that are on these different realms um, and so you have to learn to have your power to know how to navigate when you meet certain beings and some of them they won't they won't harm you or do anything to you on um, if, if you know what you're doing um, and so this is important. It's just like going into any territory. You have to learn how to navigate that territory with the right tones and the right words and things like that. You will know, um, yeah, you will know what to do. Joshua again asks, where does the evil eye symbol derive from? It's not, it's not an evil eye. This is where people that are superstitious or don't understand or know what it, it's about, like the religious world, especially the Islamic religion, they call the third eye or the pineal gland the evil eye um, because they didn't really understand or know what it is. But 
they call it the evil eye because they try to suppress you being able to do these things where they say it's, um, it's, 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 it's haram, it's not right. But that's because like they tell you a lot of things like not to have pictures, angels don't go into places where there are pictures and a lot of belief stuff. So it's all about the eye represents the story with the eye of Horus and the eye of a, um, obviously a, a, the Osiris and um, Seth and you know that story where they, they had a fight and um, he lost his eye. So there's a symbol, there's, the, there's many reasons and symbolic explanations for the eye. The all-seeing eye, meaning that once your, your third eye is open, you're able to see clearly, which is known as clairvoyance. When you encounter or travel to these different dimensions, you know what to do, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot more to that, but it's not an evil eye. It's only evil to those who look at it as, you know, you're doing something that you shouldn't do or sorcery, which is really a lot to do with religious beliefs. Love speaks to you. That's the voice of God. God is love and love is God. Yeah, but then we have to define which God and what are we calling God. You're ultimately the God and the, you know, the voices you hear are your ancestors. Some are disagreeable and some are agreeable. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, we covered that one. Is it true that Amun-Ra was considered an evil figure and was responsible for vandalizing statues of the pharaohs? Again, um, these names, there were titles as well. There are many people that were known or called by that name. And when people say something is bad, it, it's subjective because what's bad to one person is maybe good to somebody else. Meaning that in ancient Egypt, when you started to deal with the dynasties, you started to get what's happening today where you have different divisions. Um, this is what's referred to as opening Pandora's box, right? So like today now you have different religions and then within those religions you have different denominations and they just keep dividing all the time and then they fight against each other. It was the same thing in ancient Egypt at a particular time where you had the different dynasties and the, these people were like, we worship Amun. These were like, we worship Atun. These were like, we worship, you know, the different, and it was like becoming a div divisive thing. So, for example, the story of Ankh Atun, who was like, he wants to bring everybody back to the one worship, all right? And, and then you, this is where you're, you're, what that story is coming in, where you're now saying somebody's bad because they're saying, um, we're going against what you're doing. So, you know, they were trying to bring it back to the one worship of Atun in the case of Uncle Atun, because obviously he was, you can hear the word Atun, Atun, he was more for, um, for Atun, whereas those that, the priest of Amun, they were obviously for Amun. And so obviously he was against Atun. So this is where that story is coming from. But as I said, when you're defending something or you, this is why in Wusabat we're like, put all the divisions aside, come together under love and unity, true love, which is a shuk, divine love, and let's come together, those who are about the positivity, the vibration, the harmony, not the chaos, which causes more the wars and the killings and the, the problems on the planet, yeah? So that's what that was about. What side of us is agreeable? You, this is iTech Smart Faster service. We, you're, you have both sides equally. This is why they're evil, um, equal matching opponents to each other. And um, it's about maintaining balance. When we say agreeable and disagreeable, we're not, lit we're not saying that disagreeable is necessarily bad because you need that side of your nature in certain circumstances. What we're saying is that you need to be able to be balanced and control the disagreeable side of you. Because if we were like, this is how we ended up being, um, having both natures, because originally you had the Pataites, which were just mainly agreeable. 
and they were being abused because they were passive and didn't defend themselves. So, you know, the elders were like, we have to breed a being that's going to be more balanced so that you have the ability to protect yourself. And um, so you've got 180 degrees of what people call agreeable and 180 degrees of what people call disagreeable. Adding the two together gives you a full circle because circles represent completion of having both natures. But then what happens is that instead of being balanced, most people are influenced to lean to one side or the other. This is where religions, for example, such as Christianity, will tell you to be good all the time. And you can't be good all the time because if you find yourself in a situation where you're being attacked or like, you know, you had to go to war to protect your family and yourself, you would have to use your disagreeable side. Um, but in the best conditions, we're not supposed to be fighting and in chaos and killing each other. These are, these are constructs that are man-made because people then want to say they're better than other people or if you've got something, they want to take it from you, like come and take your resources instead of sharing, instead of being in harmony and everyone gets and everyone's happy. So don't look at um, what side of the side of you that's agreeable is the one that does the good things by way of everyone. The voices you hear that are not just on me, myself and I, it's about you being able to solve problems for everyone. So when we say we are here to uplift humanity, we have to do that by way of the actions and the things that we do. Okay. Um, okay, we cannot die because this is only a simulation. It's a, it's a simulation in the sense that it's the lowest form of vibration, the physical realm, which you have to master in order to graduate or progress to mastering the next levels because you have different challenges in the different environments or the different realms. I already answered that one. How can we learn our language? Cover that one. Okay. Um, can we escape reincarnation by accomplishing our purpose whilst we are here now and developing our etheric being to be able to travel on once we cross over? Absolutely. That's what the challenge is. You're supposed to be able to, um, yeah, accomplish your purpose, um, do something for humanity. And um, these are all things that will help you develop. And yes, you won't have to come back. You can just continue on and, um, yeah, cross over to the higher realms. And depending on how much of your you know, how much you've built up of your spiritual and your etheric and, you know, how powerful you are as a being, yeah, you can just not have, you can just transcend and not have to come back or translate. Okay. Um, he came to me in a dream. I, I'm supposing that's um, Pana Babyanun when you said he came to you in a dream. And if he did, good for you. You're doing something right. You're vibrating right and you're making that spiritual connection. And um, your dreams are your dreams and whatever those messages that were relayed to you. He said that nobody can actually fake being him, right? It, no one can impersonate him. So if he comes to you, there's a reason. What is the purpose of life? That's manifold. The purpose of life is to learn and discover your potential your highest potential. And as you discover your potential, you put it to use in helping, as we say, to do the works of helping Pana Babyanun, helping to teach. That's another um, interesting point. There are many, many things we have to do. And you have skills, you have um, experience, you have powers that we can use. So, so some, some of you have to find what your purpose is our collective purpose is to bring about this new cycle, to spread Wu Sabat, to build. And to spread Wu Sabat is about the teachings reaching every corner of the globe, having, as I mentioned before, um, classes everywhere, stores everywhere, books 
everywhere, abundantly available to everyone in every language, having temples so we can reenact and practice some of these rituals and ancient traditions that we are supposed to know, um, having schools, hospitals, or health centers, healing centers. You know, there are many things we have to do. To bring about this new world and this new change requires a lot of work. Bring awareness to Wu Sabat. Um, okay, um, what else do we have? Are there any benefits of magic mushrooms? I already answered that. I have four new ancient history videos to watch. Okay. Yeah, and you have people in our chat, some that will try to deviate you or give you their own remix or version of what we're teaching. Um, it's up to you. You have to discern and make up your own mind. Um, you know, because there are constantly those two opposing forces, people that are still under the six ether forces, people that are trying to win you over, to steal your soul. This is why you have to learn to hear your own voice and um, know which voices you're hearing that are agreeable and which ones are disagreeable or which ones are being outside influences. Uh, I'm in Brooklyn as well as brother in Flatbush. You have to join the family. Excellent. Um, okay, they are mostly on Telegram and on weekends. Okay, someone's answering the questions. All right, I'm just going through the questions, trying to answer as many as I possibly can. Okay, I think we have another caller. All right. Rahubat, greetings. Um, if you could say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question, please. Rahubat Sikhen. Um, My name is Tishane. I'm calling from California. Rahubat. Um, first of all, much love for all the content you've been putting out. Much love. Um, uh, Thank you. I, I got two uh, silly questions, really. I just... Um, want to know where does uh, Wu Sabat stand on capitalism, you mm -hmm. know, like just exchanging stuff for money? Like where does Wu Sabat, you know, stand on that? And um, I guess the second question is, seeing that we were modified by the Anunnaki, doesn't like, or does that affect the way we interact with reality and, you know, in the grand scope of things, our overall destiny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of where we stand with capitalism or more appropriately economics is we are royalty. We're supposed to not go without. We're supposed to have everything we need. And so um, we're, we're a thriving community worldwide. So we don't have an issue with building wealth. We are wealthy people. The gold you see on us represents that wealth. And in ancient... Um, Tamare or, you know, Africa, it's where all the riches are from, the gold, the platinum, the cobalt, the, you know, the diamonds, the silver, everything is, is put under our feet. Um, it's, it's down to us to utilise it to be wealthy. Um, so we, we don't have a problem with economics now. You have to be aware that uh, money... It's a tool that is used to control people and this is where the term the love of money is a, is, is a root to all evil because people start to love the, the money, the fictitious money, the fiat system, which is really a debt-based system. Um, you know, people will kill for it, do all kinds of crazy things for it. So we don't advocate that. And um, so, yeah, in terms of your, your first question, we, we, we need to know how to, yeah, generate and um, generate finances and, and do things in the proper way so we can sustain ourselves, do for self. That's what the master teacher teaches. And I um, read that, you know, we have to do for self. Um, 
you know what? The second part of the question has just escaped me. What was the second part of the question again? Um, uh, what's the second part of the question? Yeah. Yeah, please, call him back, because, uh, yeah, it's just escaped me. Um, it will come back. Does the master teacher have the power of invisibility or to levitate since he has a vast of... Yeah, he does. Um, but the thing is, this is Hakim Shahada. It's, it's really not about the master's um, power to, to invisibility, levitate and, and so on, because he has put out, uh, or his sister put out a book called um, uh, My Brother the Extraterrestrial that goes, and he put out The Man of Miracles many years ago. There are many books that, but the thing is, it's not about him and what his powers are. It's about how he gives you the ability for you to have those powers and for you to do what you need to do. Um, Sometimes that question is trying to allude to why he's incarcerated, for example. But every single leader that has come to this planet, no matter who it is, had to go through these tests of trials and tribulations. And most of them were incarcerated, abused, or even end up being killed for teaching the right knowledge and the right wisdom and the right understanding. So... Yeah, it's not about what the master has, it's about us and what we need to be able to do and activate and to come together by way of his teachings. The miracle is in the teachings and the information and the knowledge. Do you remember now? Yeah, it was about Anunnaki and modifying us. That's right. Yeah, so um, when we say the Anunnaki and modifying us, it doesn't apply to everyone. Not everybody falls under... The Anunnaki, as we say, there are beings that are directly related to the, the Natharu, and there are branches of us who are, are, relate, are related to the Anunnaki by way of the mixtures. Um, but this is where most people are not able to use much of their brain. They tell you, scientists tell you that you, most people use less than 10% of their brain. And this is where Wu Sabat comes in, is to activate and give you back your powers and the ability to start to use more of your brain to reprogram you by way of your DNA. You see, this is where the arrangement of those, you know, the ACGT, um, you know, when you look at the ladders on the, um, on the double helix, the different arrangement of those sequences is what reprograms you. And that can be done by way of the, um, the information or the outformation to information. This is why it's important for you to study and put into practice Pataruk and uh, actual facts and master secret. That's what they are designed to do, to give you back your powers. And then ultimately, you will get your barothry gland replaced. Now, when you're dealing with replace, the replacement of the barothry gland, right? this is a gland that we once had that when you're talking about this being maimed thing, is because... The way the glands work, because some people say, how do you know that this gland existed? The master gives us the diagrams of the brain. When you cut on like a view of the brain, you see how these glands are in sockets, right? And if you imagine a socket with a ball in it, or different sockets with balls in it, if one of them happens to not have a ball in it, but you can see the remnants of what would have been a ball, because when it was surgically removed, it's, it had to be done in a way not to damage the, the entire uh, socket for the gland. So this is able to be reinserted, but because of the technology of the, um, the extraterrestrials, our ancestors, they can literally stop, take you away, replace it and put you back and you wouldn't even know because it's, it's done in the, in the blink of an eye. And he explained that it will be done through your submental, which is this area here where they're able to, they don't even have to cut you because you're porous and they have technology that can go through, literally open your, your pores up, insert it, do the operation, knit you back up and you won't even notice. And your abilities and certain things you'll be able to do will just start happening. Um, and there are other children that are golden children that just need to be touched or activated by way of the master's tone, 
um, reading the scrolls, many ways that he will activate different people in their dreams and so on and so forth. So um, you have the ability to get that back. And it's how you know how you will do it is by how much you put in, in terms of how sincere you are, because you have to prove you're worthy. You know, they can't just give you power that you can abuse. So everyone has the ability to be um, tested and to be, to be worthy, you know. So, yeah, it's all down to you. Um, how much you put in, how much you study, how much you, how much you are really about turning yourself back inside out. Uh, okay, let me go from the bottom so that I don't leave those people out. Um, this is from Mara, Marami um, at Dora. I'm wondering if schizophrenia is the split of the agreeable and disagreeable Wolf Sabat talks about. No, that is your multiple personalities. You have multiple personalities which is where you're basically have conflicts between the different personalities and depending on who is dominant um, they will be in the driver's seat and so when you're dealing with that each personality this is where when we were talking about the art and the science of sex when you're exchanging bodily fluids you're taking on the personalities and the ancestors of the person that you're exchanging bodily fluids with that could be saliva, it could be, you know, in the sexual act. And those personalities each have their own um, 30 or less personalities. So the more mixtures, this is why I was saying that we don't advocate having, especially for young people, uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, because you don't want to mess up yourself. And then in later years, you have so many conflicting personalities that when you're trying to you know, be in a relationship and, and uh, have a proper meaningful relationship, you have all these conflicting voices and um, one minute, you know, you're one way and the next minute you're another way. This is where this, this clashing of personalities comes in, all right? In the name... Okay. Uh, meditation, clear the mind, yep. Yeah, again, knowing about your... Per um, somebody's asking, Dora, Rashid, do you know anything that can help schizophrenia? Now, of course, this is educational. All the information we're giving is educational. We're not um, giving you any medical advice, as in, you know, if you need medical attention and help, you need to seek that. However, we deal with healing and using natural herbs to heal and... Um, Knowing the information, you can help yourself, you can heal yourself in terms of knowing how to subdue these multiple personalities we're talking about. Knowing which voices mean you well and the ones that are trying to lead you astray and being able to control them by way of your mentality and your, 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 you know, your thoughts and your, your practices and the environments and the rituals and the chants and the things that you do. Okay, um, is the question, there are books out that deals with mermaids in this book that Dr. York wrote. Does it talk about empires in the ocean? Absolutely. Um, again, join our Telegram group so we can send you links. There is a reading that, um, you know, it's called uh, Atomic, and we have many readings that talk about when we first came here and we were in the seas first, and we had, you know... Um, many, many, many subterranean um, cities and we lived there as sirens and some still do. And, you know, some, there's, a, there's a Netflix series called Sirens as well that goes into this, but we were in the waters before, before we came onto land. So yes, the master teacher does explain about, you know, that part of our history in terms of being in the waters as sirens or what people are terming mermaids. Yep, he does. Uh, is the book Man from Planet Risk basically your Superman story? Does that? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what that is. They took that story and made a Superman movie. Yep. And there, there's so much we can build on that. 
um, someone is trying to speak for the master here. Um, yeah, that's funny. I'm not even going to entertain that because people talk like they actually know the master teacher when they haven't had any experience of him. Somebody here is trying to say he doesn't have certain powers that I mentioned that he does. Um, okay, cool. Um, another question. Are ringing of the ears a form of spiritual communication for our ancestors during meditation and after raising your vibration? I've experienced the ringing and strong energy shift after. Yes, it is part of that. But however, we cannot ever generalize because sometimes it doesn't apply to some people. Some people might just have, do you know what I mean, a deficiency and, um, you know, in water or headaches or the vibration and frequencies that are giving them the ring and they may say it's that. This is what I'm saying. Some things happen to some people and not, it doesn't apply to everyone, but certainly what you've described yeah, that is, that is something that has been taught to, to be true. Um, okay, I've just seen another one. Did you see my question in the chat? I was asking if God was to know everything and all things. How did Jesus know to set a dinner table for his disciples? But God didn't. Yeah, that's... that's um. The whole biblical, you know, that, that, that's the thing that if you do enough research, you will find out that these were just stories that were written by people like Josephus Flavius Pissel and his family. And um, even the way, the way the disciples sit, it's like they were taking a picture. Who do you know that goes to dinner and they all sit on one side like that? It's like, it's a story and you can see that it was design for purpose and um, like I said do some research on what I've just given you Josephus Flavius Piso P-I-S-O they are the people that are responsible for writing those um, those gospel stories the ghost spell story because it was a spell of ghost worship and um, it's a great, the greatest story ever told called the cross fiction, which they say crucifixion, but um, it was just a, it's just a made up story. Okay, um, don't forget you can still call. We have about 15 minutes left before we, um, we wind down. Um, remember, we have made it accessible. We have made it accessible to everyone where you can... Um, you can talk to us every day on Telegram. You can do the online course, which is in real time. You can read the books. You can come to the classes wherever you are in the world by Zoom, by Telegram, by um, Clubhouse, by YouTube, um, these lives, you know. So no one has an excuse because the master said that everyone will have the opportunity worldwide to know about Wusabat based on our work and what we do. Um, welcome. Healthy is our wealth. Welcome. Welcome to the member. Um, so everyone has no excuse. You have the opportunity to study, to ask questions, to learn and transform yourself into the supreme being that you really are. And don't Believe the hype, don't be fooled. Wolf's about works. You know it for yourself because it, it works from within you, you know. So don't be distracted. You only really have yourself to blame for not doing the right things. All right. Um, yeah, we still have 15 minutes left. So get your questions in. I'm just going to go through and see if I've missed anything because it, it's moving quite rapidly. Um, what is the correct mindset of a spiritual warrior and is it meant for us to fall in tune with a sword, weapons? What shall a being who wants to make a different take? Um, oh, I've just lost it. Uh, I got most of it. Um, 
What now? The sword is, if you look at the word sword, is S word, right? S word. And the, the S word is talking about using your, your two edge, the sword is your tongue. Um, because you use your mouth, your tongue to speak the words to cut up the lies. All right. So it's not about getting swords and going to war and all of that. We don't advocate any violence. But let me take this call and then we can build a bit more on that. Rahubat, um, let me know your name, where you're calling from, and then your question, please. Rahubat, well, I'm here again. My name is Victor Patu. And I would, I would like to ask about the universal law. How many are there? How, how do how, how, how they work, does he relate to Wusabat? He is very known about the universal law. Tour. So you would like to know about the universal laws and do they work? Yes. yes um, uh, I know a few of them, like uh, divine, uh, law of attraction, law of vibration. I would like to know because you have a lot of information. Yes, we do. Um, there's a book, again, called uh, The Sacred Wisdom of Tahuti, The Grand Herophant Tahuti, Thoth. Um, when you're talking about those universal laws, first of all, we're talking about laws that govern the universe, meaning that they transcend, you know, just the lower vibrations. And in this, um, the Master talks about these universal laws because... Um, when you're dealing with the universe, you know, you're dealing with not just one little planet in one solar system, in one galaxy. You know, there are many galaxies and you're dealing with um, universal laws, which are things that are higher in terms of the laws of natural nature. Um, so it doesn't matter who you are, what planet you're on. Um, it's relating to the, um, the universal laws. And the, the person that, you know, we're referring to as Tahuti is the most intelligent being. And um, he's the recorder of these, these laws and this information that has been brought down to us. And, um, you know, th th this is that scroll that goes into it in great detail. Um, just trying to find, let me just find the section that I would like to maybe share with you. Um, a very, very profound doctrine. Um, I'm just about to um, find that for you, but this is probably going to be maybe the last question by the looks of things. But yeah, universal laws, universal laws. So like, for example, until I find the section, it's like saying, treat others the way you would like to be treated you know love others as you love yourself that doesn't do you know what I mean specify it's not specified for a specific religion that those are the types of things that the true teachers um, the true teachers because this goes into all those beings like Konsu I was mentioning before um, it talks about the different deities um, I don't want to get distracted with that but you know, so Jesus would have said that, Muhammad would have said that, um, you know, most people would say the same things because it applies to everyone. Um, okay, let me read. Um, I want to just get straight to the section that um, I want to relay. But yeah, that's what you, universal law deals with things that, it will affect, if something affects the entire universe, it's going to affect everything inside of it. Like, the, like I said, the galaxies and the planets and the beings on the planet. Right, here we go. So, um, the nine Tahuti doctrines are relating to what we're calling universal law. So, that's the doctrine of the mental, the doctrine of correspondence, the doctrine of vibration, the doctrine of polarity, um, the doctrine of rhythm, the doctrine of cause and effect, the doctrine of gender, the doctrine of growth, and the doctrine of breathing. Now, each one of those, obviously, 
the number nine is very significant and always keeps coming up because we're talking about nine to the ninth um, power of nine, yeah? So each one of those doctrine is very, very profound. So um, because of time, he mentioned, um, the brother that called was mentioning one of them. So let me just read the doctrine of mental, right? It says, mind your mind for the jewels of your soul. This doctrine embodies the right knowledge that all is mental and such, sorry, all is mental and each has a mind. It explains that partemta, the all, which is the reality underlying all the outward and inward manifestations and appearances, seen and unseen, which we know under the terms of existence. The material existence, the ethereal existence, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, ether, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses, one sense, subdivided into many as ka'a, spirit, ba'a, soul, khat, body, which in itself is knowable and definable, but which may be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite, living mind in the all. The third fold you, you have touched your body, felt it through your car, and accepted the way it felt with your ba'a, your soul. You see, hear, taste, smell, and feel are all in kat, khat, your body. Knowing this is in ka and being able to appreciate it is ba. So ba'a is the soul and ka'a is the spirit. All these are but touch, all is, I am. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation in the all. Subject to the laws of created things of physical and that the universe as a whole and its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all. As does all in which mind we live and move and have our being, persons, places and things. I, you, they, this doctrine by establishing the physical and the ethereal mental nature of all things and their physical part in the universe easily explains all of the varied mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention and which without such explanation you end up with blind faith, false hopes and beliefs in spookism, chasing a ghost god, to an unknown and unproven place to receive gifts you are not worthy, no matter how good you pretend to be, just so you wouldn't get burnt in an eternal fire hell. Um, you made a deal with your God, all which is non-understandable and defy scientific realities, an understanding of this great Egyptian doctrine of mental in relations to mind. Each individual has a mind which is fed from the same mental reservoir, which enables each individual to readily grasp the laws of mental and to apply the same to his, her well-being and advancement. That's being in touch with a real God. The ancient Egyptian order student is enabled, sorry, yeah, it's enabled to apply intelligently and intelligently the great mental and physical laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner as religions have. With the Ankh, the master key, in your possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right understanding, and enter the same freely using the God mind you have, or the mind of mental, which is God. This explains the true nature of energy, power, matter, existence, and why and how all these are subordinate to the mastery of mind, and that each mind is a slave to mental, the force of ether which controls the action of matter. One of the old Tahuti masters wrote long ages ago, he or she realizes that all is, and these words are as true for all time. Without the ankh or the master key, Mastery is impossible, and the student knocks in vain at the many doors of the temple, 
and is met by the false teacher of ghosts, spooks, fictions, beliefs, myths, given false hopes, no facts, no truth, just lie after lie. The light is the devil's tool. Darkness is the home of God. Peace, tranquility and bliss. Find your way back to black. That's just one of them. Obviously, we've run out of time, but yes, we do deal with universal laws. We are part of the intergalactical community, intergalactical federation that work together to make sure that this galaxy is maintained in that tranquility of peace. And um, obviously, there are those who guard the, the universe. Family, we've come to the end. Um, we've got three minutes left. And um, it's been an honour once again to be able to come before you and share the doctrine of Wusabat, answer your questions. And um, we carry on the conversation in the Telegram group. So, you know, it doesn't stop here. Um, sign up to OSM Vision. Remember, you can also send your personal three questions that you have by videoing yourself with those three questions um, and then uploading it to um, osmvision.wetransfer.com and then we will answer your questions as you've obviously seen us doing for others. You know, this is an ongoing thing. You learn from cradle to grave. Um, there's just so much when it comes to Wusabat. Wusabat is a changing, alive doctrine, okay? Oh yeah, I'm sure you've got, you guys have seen the, the trailer, the snippet of the new video that I've done um, holding a conversation with another Muslim, um, you know, uh, Muslim person. Um, it was very interesting. Look at the trailer because this is what we're saying that having these conversations mean that people that are stuck or caught up in the monotheistic religions and the lower mysteries will intrigue you or maybe probe you to ask questions and to think about you know why you're doing what you're doing and to see how much you know Wusabat can really help you to elevate so yeah please um, watch that subscribe you know um, share share the videos like the videos this helps us you may think that um it's insig insignificant to just press a button to share or like or, do you know what I mean? It's not. It's very helpful because the algorithms on these platforms will help to, you know, make sure that, you know, other people view the videos as well. So don't take it for granted that you subscribing or sharing or liking our videos. It's not helpful. It's very, very helpful. So until next week, same time. Same place, and um, for those who are serious about this, yeah, do the course, do the online course, connect with us on um, Telegram where we have conversations continually. We share files, images, um, and yeah, we, we just keep the conversation going. Wusabat to the world. Wusabat is the future. That's my mantra, and um, that's taken directly from our master teacher, Pana Bab Yanun. And most of all, do whatever you can to help because, you know, he's incarcerated and has given his life for this. So if you can support any way you can, in any way, shape or form, live in Wusabat, teaching it, spreading it, buying the scrolls, um, helping with the legal efforts, anything you can do to help is much, much appreciated love. Wadu Moisa, which means by family until the next episode. Wadu.